I am Kim Lampy. I'm the Digital Marketing Content Manager at Series. Um, we recently surveyed people um, to figure out what um, you all want to know about the new building, and I have Daryl with me to answer your questions. Great. And I'm Daryl Berlin. I am working as the owner's rep for Series Community Project on the new culinary facility. And a lot of my work is uh, bringing together the professional team that is helping us design and engineer and uh, put together the financing for the building. First question, when do we start building? Yes, when do we start building? So the goal is to start building in September of 2024. Question number two, what are the milestones for the project? Milestones for the project, well for now, we, I'll, I'll name a few that we've achieved, which are big, and I'll name a few that we still have to get. Um, so the first uh, milestone was uh, finding the property. So we were able to find a, a wonderful uh, acre and a half property in Southwest San Rosa. Um, the second milestone was we needed to get what are called entitlements for the project, and that's going through a city design review process. Um, and them approving the architectural design, the look and the feel of the building, um, uh, some other technical stuff around, you know, parking and, and other things. And we achieved that back in August of 2023. Uh, and the uh, third big milestone was purchasing the property. So Ceres now owns the property, has entitlements. Um, I would say the fourth is right now our, our big goal is getting all of the permits approved. So we're in the process of doing that. We're currently in what's called plan check review where all the different departments from the city, you know, building, engineering, grading, electrical, you know, you name it, uh, they're combing over the plans and making sure everything's to code and ready to go. Uh, and we're hoping to have that in place by mid-May. Um, another big milestone is we have uh, signed a pre-development contract with a local contractor, mm -hmm. and that's um, GMH Builders, and we're super, super excited about working with them. They have a lot of experience in nonprofit um, commercial building. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, they helped with the uh, Guerneville Health Clinic Build their building last year. Um, yeah, so it's it's kind of in our realm. And then lastly, I'll say the, the the biggest milestone at this point is getting the financing in place. Uh, the big milestones once you start building is uh, doing the site work, and so that's getting out of the ground. Second big milestone is doing the framing, getting all the uh, walls built, uh, roof on. Uh, the, the third big milestone is um, getting all the what are called the MEPs, so the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, mm -hmm. all the rough ends, and the biggest milestone up to that point is called a frame inspection, where the city inspectors will come and they'll see everything open. They need to see all the rough end utilities, mm -hmm. and they need to see that the frame is put together structurally. So that's a big one. And then lastly, it's getting all the landscape parking finishes mm -hmm. together on the exterior. And I'll just mention probably the big, uh, the big milestone for the finish is getting our solar panels. And excitingly, we're having a microgrid with some battery backup and getting that all connected through pg and &E. Third question, where are you sourcing materials from? Are they primary, primarily local? We will absolutely source as many local products as we can. Um, we will try to source as much lumber as we can locally, but we really are tapped into more of a regional mm -hmm. to national yeah. market on a lot of these materials. We also have a few opportunities to do some finishes on the landscape that are going to be very local. We're going to use mostly redwood uh, for benches throughout the garden spaces and the outdoor gathering areas. So those will be very local. We'll also have that finish carry into the building in the lobby with desks. We'll have some other desks that might be made again from local wood. Um, so those will be sort of the touches where we can. We'll source mm -hmm. 
that material as local as possible. One opportunity to source really local is the O'Reilly Media is allowing series to go through their offices that they're not using anymore and reuse and repurpose a lot of the office furniture. Okay, question number four. Uh -huh. um, what is your fire preparedness architecture? All of our plans go through the fire department for their approvals. They want to make sure that any parking um, or any or orientation to the building um, is such that they can pull one of their trucks up and we'll have a fire hydrant on site. There are fire hydrants along the street side as well, but we'll have fire hydrants on site so they can attach directly to that fire hydrant and then if needed, send a ladder up to the rooftop, get up to the roof. All of our building, what's called building envelope, so from siding to wall finishes and interior um, insulation is all fire rated and there's different fire ratings, usually an hour or two hour, and we need to just meet current code on those ratings. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, the whole building, because it's a commercial building, will be sprinklered in a couple different levels. Um, and it will be sprinklered throughout the building, but more importantly for the what's called the kitchen hotline, where you actually have the kitchen equipment and cooking going on, there are fire suppression systems under the hoods. Question number five, are you going to be fire safe landscaping? The, the landscape itself, there will be trees, there will be shrubs. All of those will be away from the building. Gotcha. So again, we're, we're you know, and we'll have hardscape. So the, the next question, for landscaping, is there a focus on mitigating the impact of hardscape on the temperatures in our outdoor spaces? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Also, to break up the hardscape, we're using a lot of softscape. Mm -hmm. Also, to, for the typical parking for the asphalt, we're breaking up the asphalt parking with um, what are called pavers, and that allows both water to infiltrate into uh, our parking lots, but it also keeps uh, the, it, it doesn't heat up as much as the asphalt. Mm -hmm. The other part that we're doing is we're doing PV um, solar structures, so there will be three very large PV shade, well, mm -hmm. let's say solar structures that will shade the cars, and that'll keep that sort of heat island temperature yeah. down as well. Uh, the last thing I just want to mention in this is we did certain things on the exterior part of the building to mitigate and shade mm -hmm. okay, okay. the windows so yeah. that we're reducing the heat load mm -hmm. of the building and making the building more efficient. So all of those sort of work together and maybe the last thing I'll say is that we have a couple what are called rain gardens or uh, bioswales yeah. throughout the landscape and again that will help store water. Um, the, the next question does have to do with water. Great. Um, how is your water use being addressed in the new facility? There's two ordinances that we have to follow. One is called the, uh, it's called WELO, which is the Water Efficient Landscape Ordinance, I believe. Someone could check me on that. <laughs> and so we have to submit a lot of paperwork about how much our landscape is oh. using water. Yeah. And then they, they mandate that you have to break all of your landscaping into hydro zones. Mm -hmm. And you can only have so many hydro zones of square foot area of plant material that needs a lot of water. You have to mostly use hydro zones that are low water consuming zones. And maybe this will tie back into local resources. So we're going to use pretty much native plants throughout the landscaping. And we would hope that we can work with the local nurseries to supply those native plants. The other one is we have to submit how much water the facility is using mm -hmm. um, yeah. down to the gallon. And if there is a drought declared in the area, users who are using a lot of water, if they're going over a certain limit, have to pay, they have, they, to, pay. They have yeah. to pay, yeah. and then those fees are trying to be used for helping implement more water efficient 
uh, appliances throughout the city.